Have you ever wondered what your organization's maturity is with Power Automate and RP adoption? We have Ashwin Rajat Krishnamurthy from Power Platform Customer Advisory Team to share with us how to do that today on PowerCat Live. My name is Taiki Yoshida and I'm from the PowerCat team. Today we have Ashwin as our guest. Hi Ashwin. Hey Taiki, how you doing? I'm good. How's you? I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for asking. Awesome. Yeah, no problem. So, do you want to do a quick introduction of yourself? For sure. I'm Ashwin Krishnamurti. I'm part of the PowerCat team here at Microsoft. Okay, so um, you're going to talk about the adoption maturity model. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about it? For sure. So, to start off, what is really the automation maturity model? So you can think of the automation maturity model as a sort of a structured guidance and gauge to understand where you are at in your automation journey. And as part of the automation maturity model, we also cover best practices as one could adopt to mature across this scale. And this maturity model, so why do you need this? Good question there, Taiki. Um, so one of the things is... Uh, people would want to understand where they are at in their automation journey, right? Especially automation mm -hmm. practitioners. The yeah. maturity model gives you a sense of a, of a compass to see where you are at in your automation journey, right? So that's one of the major objectives. The second objective, if you had to think about it, is perspectives depending on the enterprise you represent can vary greatly. Mm -hmm. So really, the automation maturity model in many ways guides you to understand where you are at from a perspective perspe uh, thought process. Right? What are your perspectives and how do you want to uh, focus on it? So that's some of the things which you want to look at. Uh, and also, you'll also want to understand what are your risks along the way. As you want to mature across this maturity model, uh, there are some potent potential risks that you might want to uh, look at and manage um, in an in a, in a, uh, intelligent way. So the maturity model addresses that as well. And it's also important to understand who your key stakeholders are. So as you want to mature, and that's mm -hmm. the objective of many organizations, you'll have to understand who are the right stakeholders you have to involve to make sure that uh, you have the right programs in place. So this is pretty much the need for a maturity model. Um, this kind of sounds a little broad. What's Microsoft doing this? Great question there as well, Taiki. So, Microsoft's automation maturity model is based of guidance which we have provided in the past. Uh, and some of them are the Automation Center of Excellence, the Admin and Governance White Paper, and the Holistic Enterprise Automation Techniques. So we've taken, we've, we've seen through this, read through this guidance, and we thought it would uh, be nice to create a, uh, a concoction um, that would be addressed through the RPA maturity model. Um, and so a little bit about what this guidance is mean so let's start off with the Automation Center of Excellence overview. Okay. So in this particular slide here, so we were talking about, so what the Automation Center of Excellence overview does is it highlights who are your major stakeholders and mm -hmm. what are some of the functions they might um, work on, right? So a yeah. citizen developer would be more interested in nurturing, idea, ideation, testing the solution, finally deploying that solution. But they cannot really, automation is not successful um, as a as a lone player, so it's important. It's it's more of a team sport. So it's important that the citizen developer works with the other uh, stakeholders as well. So in this case, mm -hmm. the automation COA members, all the way until your executive sponsors. It's important that they all work together collaboratively. So from a RPA maturity model focus, what we are looking at is to make sure that um, how is what is maturity to a citizen developer? What is maturity mm -hmm. to an infrastructure ops person? And all of their perspectives have been outlined in the maturity model. So that's from an automation center of excellence overview perspective. Okay. And, and another thing is, and this pretty, pretty much forms the core of the automation maturity model, is what we call HEAT. So this is the guidance that we had released in the past. HEAT stands for Holistic Enterprise Automation Techniques. Okay. So HEAT is based of seven pillars. So you have empower, discover mm -hmm. and plan, design, build and test, deploy and manage, secure and govern, and nurture, right? So mm -hmm. what our thought and our perspective is for an automation program to be successful, it's important that you lay focus on all of these seven pillars. So this forms an important aspect of our RPA maturity model itself. Now. We, there's also the admin and governance white paper, which we had released uh, towards the end of last year. 
And what the admin and governance white paper does is it it accumulates all of the best practices that we've learned from our various uh, engagements with our clients. And we've curated all of that great information into one document, right? So the automation maturity model feeds a lot of those best practices that have been outlined in the admin and governance white paper as well. Another factor to Taiki is we've mm -hmm. also thought about scale, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when you're talking about maturity, when you're experimenting, you might be in a very, you might face different challenges as mm -hmm. to compare to a state wherein you have a well-established automation uh, program in your organization. So we've also taken uh, that into effect while building our maturity model. Okay. So initially, when you're starting, you might be at a state where you're experimenting. Then as you progress, you might have few bots in your production environment to a point wherein you might have many bots serving multifunctional teams in an enterprise, right? And uh, what are those challenges mm -hmm. that one might face when they say at an experimenting stage to a point wherein um, they, the bots serve multifunctional teams? And how mm -hmm. what are certain best practices to address them? So that's taken into account as well. I see, I see. That, that, that all makes sense, yeah. No, oh, great, yeah. And finally, um, so this is the Microsoft's automation maturity model. And here what we have is a snapshot of it. There's a more detailed version in a link that uh, I, I will share. Uh, basically, the thought process is this. So we spoke about the heat pillars. So in this particular snapshot, you have the heat pillars outlined. And then you also have the CMMI level phases across initial to efficient along the x-axis. Um, and one other perspective which we wanted to talk about is say when you are at a level 100 in Empower, where should you be at a level 100 from a build and test? Similarly, when you're at a level 300 in uh, Discover and Plan, where should you be from a nurture perspective at a level 300? So it's it's a it's a matrix which is, which is uh, two dimensional in its approach. Um, and it also talks about how you would iterate through these various phases. How do you, do you move from an Empower 100 to an M, uh, uh, level 400 on an Empower scale? And what are some of the best practices to get to that? So the automation maturity model addresses all of this. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, more on this is that we've also released a blog post quite recently. And uh, here's the link for the blog post and it talks about it in more detail. Uh, there's also a PDF uh, version of the maturity model, which goes through each of these uh, maturity features in, in detail. So I would encourage folks who are watching this video to take full advantage of it. Oh, good. Now, I'm glad you shared the link because I definitely can't remember all of the stuff here you just said. So that's good to know. Uh, that's awesome, Taiki. And finally, so the, some, the more resources, it's not just the maturity assessment. Uh, okay. that's been shared. So the more resources which you guys want to really want to take advantage of, uh, all of our older guidances, I'm sure uh, you're already gaining value out of it. But then when you see it in uh, alongside with the maturity assessment, I'm sure uh, it'll make a lot more sense. And I'm sure you'll be able to drive adoption in your organization. Yeah, these links are super useful. Thanks for sharing this, Ashwin. So I think this is the end of the show. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll hope to see you again. Thanks, Ashwin, and thanks everyone. Thanks guys. Take care. Thanks, Taiki. Bye.